Hello and welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It? Podcast. I'm your host, GB. It has been a while and I do apologise. I've been a very, very busy boy, but I'm back with a great episode lined up for you guys. God, I've even forgot how to do the intro now. Fuck. We're not here to discuss the intro. We're here to talk about today's guest. Today's guest is a man with a fabulous moustache. Please welcome the dapper gentleman, Peter Miller. Peter, how you doing today? Yeah, very well, thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. I am the man with the best moustache in British wrestling. And that's that's all I'm good for. That's it. Uh, I can grow a moustache. There's more to you, mate. There's more to you. I've done commentary for your matches and uh, I was very impressed. I thought it was great, but I'm not going to go that far yet into your DKW career. I'm going to rewind the clocks a little bit and I want to discover, Peter, what actually made you a fan of wrestling in the first place? Oh, we're going way back. Um, so I'll preface this with I am a very old man. <laughs> I, I am almost 40 now. So when we talk about me and wrestling, we're talking about late 90s. That's when I was a teenager. So my favorite wrestler was Mankind, Mick Foley, Dude Love, Cactus Jack. Mm -hmm. But when I knew him, it was just Mankind. And there was something about a slightly overweight man just going through pain that really spoke to me when I was young. Ripping was, his hair out like, and choking people. It's just, what a crazy Yeah. Character. It was something on the lines of, if he can do this, why can't I do this? Like, I yeah. can take a big amount of pain. I never got into wrestling. Like, I never wrestled at that age. But always in the back of my head, it was like, oh, Mick Foley can wrestle. Maybe I can wrestle as well. Um, that's what got me into wrestling. And then reading his books made me love wrestling. Like, oh my God, Foley's books. Uh, have a nice day. Just a spectacular read. It's a fantastic it. book, isn't it? Even like um, the TNA lockdown one, thought it was pretty oh my good. God. I know some people shit a little bit because it's not WWE, but I liked it. Yeah, I've read them all, owned them all. Um, when Mick was doing a comedy tour in, God, early 2000s, I went to London purely purely to get that book signed by him. Yeah. And I got my um Cactus Jack Wanted Dead or Alive t shirt from him at the same time. Which is my first ever wrestling t shirt. Very precious to me. That's a great t shirt, mate. Great design for it as well. Uh Foley, if anyone has met him, uh, I can vouch like he is one of the nicest wrestlers you're ever gonna meet. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was uh my it's weird to say a hero it seems like such an odd concept to say about mm -hmm. a professional wrestler but he he was someone i looked up to a lot as part of the intelligentsia i'd say he was very he is a very very intelligent man yeah but also crazy, crazy? oh mate, like, is. is that even right or just takes risks like will put his body through pain for his art I don't think he is crazy. He's too smart to be crazy, but yeah, he's tough. He's a tough gentleman. Definitely, man. He sacrificed body, but you know, the fans on a daily basis don't let him forget that it was worth it. And they thank him, you know, for everything he sacrificed and everything he gave to us. And I've got to ask you, Peter, your favorite Mick Foley match. <laughs> you that can say King of the Ring 98, but I mine's different and a few fans will automatically go to the Hell in a Cell match. But, you know, some other ones out there, Shawn Michaels, Mind Games, Randy Orton, uh, Backlash. Yeah, you know what it is? And it's disgusting and it's the wrong answer. It's um him in the Rumble against Rock, where he takes 211 chair shots to the yeah, head. It's yeah. pretty bad with that, what we know now. Yeah. But genuinely, it was, it, like, it killed me that match. I, yeah, it, it was, it was art. It made me feel emotions. It made me hate The Rock. It made me sympathize Foley. And also the whole gimmick storyline that he would never use those two words going yeah. up to it. So they couldn't, and then they just knocked him unconscious with the bell and then just put the mic on his unconscious head and then played I quit over the 
the whatever it was speakers yeah. that that really that got me because I was like, no, he never. And this has got to be like, I must have been like 18, 20. I was an adult. Like, what was I doing? Being like, no, he never <laughs> said I quit. That was uncomfortable. But I'm okay. Like, really... you know, what's happened at home? Only, only said I quit. <laughs> <laughs> they cheated, Foley, no. But yeah, I, him winning the title was obviously great. Yeah. Um, the Hell in a Cell match. Shit for that, yeah. That was astonishing in the way that it was just I love the story. I think it's in Have a Nice Day, isn't it? The story of him waking up semi conscious and just seeing Terry Funk sleep and being like, Why why are Terry Funk's boots there? <laughs> and then he, takes, he takes his thing so well, he's got a tooth back. in his nose and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all bloody. But like, yeah, the idea of him waking up semi conscious being like his boots doing that? That's weird. <laughs> just cracks me up every time. All right, Foley is God. I'm just gonna summarize this chat. One of the best to do it. I love him, and uh, I'd probably say my favorite match might be the Triple H match, Royal Rumble 2000 Street Fight. I can watch that. Sorry. Oh my God, the Triple Channel H Four. Do you remember watching it on Channel Four? You're old enough. Yeah. Oh, that it was a trilogy of matches, wasn't it? Uh... Yeah. Yeah, because they had Mankind, then they had the Cactus Jack, and then they had the McFoley match. They had the 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 Hell. Yeah, oh yes, they had the Hell in a Cell at No Way Out, and then you had the Street Fight, and I think they had a match before. But then Foley starts going a bit like, "Oh, you haven't met this guy for a while," and then rips his shirt, and it's Cactus Jack, and the fans go fucking nuts for it. Yeah, yeah, that also made me really sad because that was like. I was like, oh, but he won't lose. Oh, he lost again. And they were all retirement matches, weren't they? So <laughs> Then he comes yeah. back like two months later to the fucking Commissioner. Oh, Commissioner Foley. Loved it. Love Commissioner Foley. Oh. And then I started watching TNA because Foley went to TNA. <sighs> the less said about that, the better. I, um, I watched a recent video on YouTube. He did um, mm. you know, an overview of Foley's run TNA. And I genuinely didn't remember how bad it was. I, I tried to maybe erase it. Fucking hell, yeah. man. It was sad. Sad. So the Foley run in TNA was terrible, but... He got I that really... paycheck. Well, it got me into Austin Aries. Really? Who now, now I'm like, okay. Now, Twitter yeah, yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. But wrestler Austin Aries Talented in the fucker. early 2000s when he won the X Division title and then cashed it in to go for the main title. I was like... Damn, oh, that's yeah, because Bobby Roode, that's quality. That was so good. And yeah, so TNA had uh, Beer Money, had the Dudleys, I think, at that point. It had Hogan, but we'll ignore that. Had Angle, had AJ Styles, had Joe. Like, that is a time to watch mm. TNA. Yeah, and oh, uh, yeah. So Foley's part of it wasn't great, but TNA was great. The roster, it was at really one great. point, if you had to compare the two, Maybe like Star Power was probably obviously more of like John Cena and Batista and stuff, but the actual yeah. quality TNA oh, was, stupid. you could argue, was better than WWE. The ratings yeah. are differently, but yeah, <laughs> the book yeah. was atrocious sometimes. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. I mean, their women's division was hugely talented and just so badly. It was just, yeah, the booking was just bad, head to toe. Yeah, man. Like, it was questionable sometimes when you watch it back. Um, Peter. I want to know, yeah. as we've discovered, Mick Foley being your favourite, getting you into wrestling, you getting a book signed by him and you read his books multiple times. Would you say he was an influence into you becoming a professional wrestler? Or was there a moment uh, that didn't involve Mick Foley? Thought, yeah, fuck it, I'm quite interested now. I want to do this. I want to give it a go. So, semi-interesting story. As it's a podcast about me, let's say an interesting story. So COVID happened. I I was at home feeling a little worse for wear, a mm-hmm. bit like, oh, I'm not achieving anything anymore. Um, I was mainly finished with my nursing career. So I was almost a qualified nurse, but just got locked down for, I think I was at home for about three, four months. After about month two, I was like, right, I need to, I need to do something. I need to change. So my partner, Helen, very kindly bought me an exercise bike. So every morning, wake up, I'd get on my exercise bike for half an hour, 
And then I slowly bought the most expensive weights you'll ever buy in your life because it was COVID and everything was overpriced. And I started working out. COVID ended, restrictions lifted, so on and so forth. Started going to the gym, really enjoyed the gym. Went from a semi okay looking 120 kilos to a quite good looking 86 kilos, as in body terms. I've always had this mug. Um, and I was literally sat in the gym on my phone and I went, I wonder if there's any wrestling training schools around here. Just like finally happy with my body image and feeling physically fit and strong enough to do something like this. Mm. Um, and then DK was, God, what is it? A 10 minute drive. It's like four, five miles away from my house. I was like, oh, so you are an Essex wait. person, like I, want, I yeah. don't want to say lad because I don't think I can't imagine you saying the word lad, but you're from Essex, basically. <laughs> Much longer story. I am. North we'll come back to that. I'll let you continue your story first, and then we'll come back to the Essex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Feeling good, looking a bit better. Joined DK, and then essentially the rest is history. I went there, took some bumps, loved it. Um, was going every Sunday training and then after about three or four months I realized I wasn't progressing very well yeah. I started listening to like podcasts and trainers and realized I need to train more yeah so I started training four times a week roughly I one one day I worked it out it was something like 600 pound a month I was spending on wrestling training oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like 20, 25 pounds. It's 100 pound a week, roughly. So like 400 pounds a month. Yeah. Um, And yeah, so did that. Started to get a little bit better. And then started getting booked a little bit. So DK very kindly booked me for most of their shows. And then had some work at Rumble, at DOA. Um, yeah, I'm just enjoying it. Enjoying being an older gentleman of wrestling getting into it late and yeah, enjoying the progression and um, learning a lot. I'm it's, going to dissect um, uh, some of what you said. Mm. A, I think there's some bits to touch on, especially with you know, the DKW Academy. Um, I've got an association with myself. Uh, you can see me doing commentary there in two weeks. Um, cheap plug, cheap plug. Yeah. But I want to know first, Peter, what was your first impression when you went there the first day, what was it like for you with, you know, your eyes saying, oh shit, you know, I'm finally doing this, but I'm, not, I'm yet to take a bump. Just tell me, just talk yeah. me the first the day or two when you were in the academy. Yeah. So the first day, um, I was very, very nervous. I was just generally nervous. I think most people are about yeah. going into a new place and being like, oh, all these people are going to be new. Knowing in my head that I have to go and shake everyone's hand, and introduce myself, which such a wrestling never... thing, isn't it? Though <laughs> it is, um, and I've constantly said in reference to that, it's really good to get people into that idea that you look people in the eye and you shake their hands and you introduce yourself to them, yeah. because it's, I think, a lost art nowadays. I don't think people. When they meet someone, will look them in the eyes, shake their hand, and introduce themselves. I think I people find it much easier to just sort of be like, mm, "Yeah," and talk around it. I think a lot of that's to do with like technology and social media, and I, I think it's a lot yeah. to do with it because we don't interact with people face to face nearly as much as we used to. Because all interaction used to be, you know, face to face. So yeah. Knocking your mate's door. Can he come out tonight? Can he come out? Yeah. You're not so he's done his homework. Yeah. <laughs> and you went to speak to him. That's it. You couldn't. There's no other way. No other way. Yeah. One of my least favorite things about modern society and mobile phones is people don't knock on doors. People get to someone's house and text, I'm here. And I'm, just I'm like, actually guilty of that. I'm, just... <laughs> I'm guilty of that. No, it's really, it's really fucking cheeky, but you're so right, and I'm sorry. That's, I do that. Yeah, but everyone does. Everyone does. <laughs> I, it's honestly something I actively fight against, as in me personally, because I want to just get to someone's house and be like, I'm here. Yeah. I wait for the car, but I'm like, no, I'm an adult. Let's go to their house and knock on their door. 
yeah. check their door number like six times, but then yeah, go and knock on their door. Um, yeah, it's it's what it is. Um, yes, so uh, Mark Henry was taken to one side to teach me how to bump. Um, which was one of the only two times I ever worked with him or he trained me. He was there for a couple of weeks and then I didn't see him again. Um, yeah, he just brought out a map and Matt, sorry, and taught me how to bump. Uh, everyone was really kind, really lovely. Um, Lucas obviously spearheading it with Dan, yeah. as in making people feel welcome. Um, and then Dark Horse Dave Burns sort of took me under his wing a bit and uh he would work with me a lot about technical wrestling uh lockups wrist locks and just getting them all really really crisp um yeah so really welcoming really friendly place yeah um on all the training schools i've been to are all lovely all the trainers are lovely all the people are lovely i think everyone in wrestling is genuinely a really nice person Nice to hear I that. Think we have, I mean, there's been dark yeah, days, think, but for you to say this, you know, you've not had a bad time. Everyone you've met, just I can vouch for DKW. Um, everyone on the roster, you know, is, is genuinely a nice person. Wants to be there. Wants to put on a good show. They do shows for charity as well. Um, yeah, I've met you. You was really nice. Um, we we'll talk your match with Denzel Mac. Brilliant. I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. And you know, it, it's good to hear some positivity, you know, about British wrestling. Yeah, um, for me, the community is one of the nicest communities of people I've ever met. Mm. Um, everyone's I've made genuine friends in wrestling who very happily will go out and like grab a beer with. And mm. I can't say that in any other like world or community I've ever been a part of. This is the only one where I'd say I've made genuine friends. Oh, that's wicked, man. That's wicked. Um, yeah, there's three people now I, I interact with, and there's you know, Champagne Charlie, you know, someone I'll happily call good friends. And yeah, you know, I can't say enough good things about that man, what he's done for me, my podcast, and just me as a person. You know, just he really elevates people and you know, mm. goes out of his way to make you feel better. Um, but I'm not going to blow up his ego anymore because uh, I've never hear the end of it from him when I next see him. But no, nah, he's a good, good guy, good guy. Um, Peter, back to you. You're the guest, gentlemen, the dapper gentleman. Let's talk about your in-ring debut, your first ever match. Tell me how it went. <laughs> Tell me who you wrestled and just go into a bit more detail about the actual match. Did you win also? Don't forget that part. Mm, most important part. So my first paid in-ring match was against Fentos, um, who is genuinely, again, one of the nicest humans I've ever, I've ever met. My first in-ring match in public was a charity match against Dark Horse Dave Burns. So, which one would you prefer? Let's go with the charity match, because I've got a feeling some will be expected to be really uplifting. No, oh, yeah, it was amazing. But I've got a feeling there's a bit of a dark side to the story. Like, you might oh, have no, I'm, I, ring. It was my It was my pure debut. So yeah. it was as good as you would expect someone's debut to be. It was ghastly. Like, I essentially hid from the crowd while trying to be the baby face. And by hid from the crowd, I mean, like, I was always at the back of the ring. Yeah. I was never, like, fighting back. I was just so conscious of, oh, this is what the next spot is. This is where I have to be. This is what I have to do. And then the... um one where you throw them over your head. Battle you Royal. Down. No, no. I've actually... I was one of the few people who didn't debut a Battle Royale. No, it was a single That's match. really rare in this country. Game. That is very yeah. rare. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the move where they're running it. You, you're crouched down. You throw them up over your head. What the it's frick is that shot. called? Uh, is that when um, the... Is it in a tag match or singles? No, just the singles. Singles. So, right, so you, you throw them up. Imagine I'm in a, um, like, the start of a powerbomb position, but I just stand up and throw them behind me. Oh, very like common a We all know what it's called. No, he just lands an attack. I'm a nerd. I don't, I don't, I don't know the technical names. That's why I'm the colour commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Do the jokes. 
Did the band just oh. the back back body drop? Back just the drop. normal back body drop. If anyone in the comments knows, by the way, just fill us in, fill us in as this goes on. Um, but so, yeah, yeah, sorry, continue. <laughs> sorry, so I was just meant to do a nice back body drop towards the end of the match. Yeah. I get him. I'm um, in the wrong position. I'm quite close to the ropes, so I panic. I get him halfway up, so he's currently there on top of me, and he's trying to finish the back body drop because he's a professional. And yeah. I'm sort of like holding him, and then I just sort of wiggle him over. I end up stumbling back, so he's even closer to the ropes by the time we finish, and he just smacks his legs on the ropes, and I feel terrible. Yeah. Um, but he, he was fine. Picks me up. Gives me the clothesline. One, two, three, all over. Um, but, yeah. And that Match, I was known as the vet because I I was a uh, veterinary nurse. So I had the stethoscope, the mask, and the scrub top. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I was, signing... your heart out, DMD. <laughs> I was signing the um the backstage pass afterwards, the vet, to which I got some chagrin from wrestlers being like, You're not a veteran. I was like, no. No, I'm not. My character is a veterinary surgeon, so I'm the vet. They were like, "Oh yeah, that's fine." <laughs> I was like, "Going on, on bro. Going on here. It's right backstage first match. I'm not pretending to be a veteran wrestler on jury my debut. Someone needs to. Uh, someone needs to let them know what's going on about this business. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was my first character, and then my next character was the professor which was um, debuted in my match against Ventos, which, ironically, uh, we both had a cap and gown, so like a graduation uh, cap and a gown. I didn't realise that this was Ventos's gimmick until about two weeks before that match, and that's why I then changed away from that gimmick, because I was like, oh, I've stolen this from someone who wrestles like in Essex as well. Not even in a different county. Like it's the exact same gimmick as him. So, so was he uh, this... not happy about it? Was he, he was right fine. He was right about it. Yeah. Um, Jack is genuinely so lovely. He um, he agreed to do the weird Spider Man thing where we were both pointed and was like, "Oh, oh, it's the same." <laughs> I'm so excited to do that at the beginning of the match where we both come out dressed the same, and be like, "Oh, oh, it's the same." Um, but yeah, that match for a debut in front of, you know, a paid debut was so good. Jack planned the whole match, made it so easy for me. And at one point, this is what I really remember about it. I was The next spot was just a scoop slam. I didn't really remember it, but all of a sudden, this six foot five, six, six man was just on my shoulder where he'd literally just jumped himself up there. And I was like, oh. Okay, I guess I'll slam you now. Thanks, mate. But, Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> so, so easy to work with. I swear this man could work a broom. Like, he he worked himself. The beginning spots were, I had him in a wrist lock, and he just said, hold the wrist lock, and essentially just flipped himself around the ring. Yeah. Made me look amazing. I was just like, yeah. I really I'm going to work with you again, and as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he makes people... Really bad wrestlers look really good. That's talent. That is a talent. Yeah, can't say enough good things about him. One thing is, um, I noticed it's on your social media. I think it's your first post on your Instagram account without mm. a mustache. You look so fucking different. Like the fans will see it. I'll send them to your Instagram uh, at the end of the podcast. But it's one thing you, you'll note straight away. It's it's not there. Honestly, I was like. Fucking hell. And it's just a mustache. That's the weird thing, isn't it? It makes such a difference. But you do look like a different person. Yeah. Yeah, that was the that was my letterman jacket. So that's when I was the professor. So that was the like American jock sort yeah. of graduate, smarmy smart guy sort of thing. So yeah, that's clean. You're I down the Russo. <laughs> Alex, um Alex Ryder, was it? Who had the oh, Letterman Alex, um, Alex Ryder, yeah, yeah. yeah Banging yeah. themes. That, that was... to my face. That's the only really good thing I say about him, but yeah. That that was like the gimmick. 
the idea of the gimmick when it first started, mainly because I had a Letterman jacket with a P on for Peter. I was like, oh, great. There we go. We'll just do that as a gimmick. My gimmicks have literally spawned out of, oh, I've got this, might as well do it. This gimmick spawned out of, oh, I've grown a beard. Oh, let's just shave it and keep the tash. Oh, there we go. New gimmick. <laughs> I'm a gentleman. The, the bowler hat and yeah. the moustache, which is, yeah, it's well looked after, I can see. You know, I've seen it myself. It's, uh, it's a it's really good moustache. It's a strong one. The um the bowler hat was I was charity shopping in Hornchurch. Mm-hmm. Went into the charity shops and went, Do you have any hats? And they were like, Yeah, I think so. Just went upstairs and brought down this hat, was like, Yeah, 50p. I was like, perfect. <laughs> and yeah, actually, this gimmick, the pre-mustache, the Bowler hat was born from um, a Greg Burridge like trainee show. So the trainees all put on a show together. Yeah. And I had to be the English gent because I was fighting the mean American. So this was a trainee called uh, Cameron, really, really top bloke, um, going back to America now. But the story of our match was the good English person versus the evil American coming over being like, oh, isn't America great? So I went to charity shops and just bought a bowler hat and a cane. Ah. And that's um, that's where this gimmick came from. Have you thought about selling any of the hats? Obviously not your hat, but... <laughs> I, um, I constantly am thinking about merch and thinking, would anyone actually want to buy any of these things? Um, so I was thinking, like, do I buy little plastic bowler hats and sell them? Yeah, I've, um, I've got a little t shirt design, which is a nice bowler hat with a big mustache under it. Um, and I have a couple of those t shirts, one for me and my partner. But I keep thinking, would anyone really want to buy them? I, I don't believe in yourself, maybe. Peter. Believe in yourself, mate. Maybe they will, mate. They will. Um, just a few more questions, mate, and then I'll let you. Enjoy the rest of your evening because we're actually in the same time zone. I speak to Americans a lot as well. So sometimes, like, yeah, cool, right, wicked. Um, Peter, who has or had the best mustache in wrestling history? Besides you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, genuinely might be me at the moment. I'm just saying. That's a thumb. Um, it's a heck of a mustache. So obviously, Mustache Mountain had theirs. Trent had the better one, clearly, and it was very good mustache. But the one I'm thinking about, which isn't, I think, just gimmick. It worked really well. Was Rick Rude's? Gotta say, Rick Rude. Because wasn't that a great mustache? As in, it, it just fitted in with him so well. With the mullet. And then when he went with yeah. the short hair and had the little stubble and then the, the strong, thick yeah. mustache. It's like, what a like man. A Magnum PI mustache. Like, yeah, that's a man's mustache. Like, you are a man. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he was a ladies' man, he was actually really faithful to his missus. I mean, back in those days, like, you know, mm. just read Bret Hart's book, then, you know, you find out they're all, uh, we're the most faithful people. But Rick Rude apparently was one of the ones that was actually, even though his gimmick was, you know, womanizer and, you know, the, the oh, you sweat hogs and. Oh, yeah. Man. That, that's a pleasant, pleasant surprise that there was anyone that was all that faithful. <laughs> you probably had one hand, mate, back in that days. Um, I'm trying to figure out a mustache now, got my head. Uh, so we've got Rick Rude. Cody Rhodes, I liked his mustache when he did that. That was pretty cool. I I loved pretty much all of Cody Rhodes' stupid gimmicks. They were fab. The uh, dashing, dashing Cody Rhodes, and then they're like, I have to wear a mask now. I thought the undashing though... Cody was actually really good fucking work. Good character work. Yeah. Yeah, I love... I didn't really like Stardust, to be honest, but who did? Um, uh, yeah. No, nah, I wanted to. I really did. Because I remember when they beat Shields, a great moment... Fans are into mm. it. Dusty's there. And they slowly transform into Stardust. I wanted it to work. I wanted it to work. It was fucking terrible. I'm so sorry, Cody. But even he wanted to get out of it. Especially when his dad died. And WWE's like, no, Stardust. It was like, okay, AW, see you soon. 
Yeah, but no, dashing Cody Rhodes and undashing Cody Rhodes, I thought they were excellent. I yeah. I liked that era of wrestling a lot, which I guess not many people did because it was kind of rubbish. But that yeah, was like, I mean, like deep in the PGA, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I started watching WWE at that point again because of um, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. So yeah. I actually watched Game Show NXT, oh, God, so which is the best worst television you. Do you ever remember the watch. theme song? Yeah, right. I love love game show nxt it is terrible and season three i want to say with ec3 being Derek bateman oh my god with uh curtis uh what's fandango's name in it oh my goodness oh um, i want to say curtis something now i can only think of curtis axel but i'm not going to google it because normally sometimes i get stuck on google something but i'm not going to cheat um comments that's when they're open Comment below with his fucking name. Uh, oh, yeah. Derek Bateman being trained by Daniel Bryan and then <coughs> dating the Bellas and Derek Bateman, EC3, being like, we, we're we all about two things, chicks in America. Just So corny, but it, it kind of worked, didn't it? It was so bad. And there was a... um, uh, It was like um the American game where you're on with your wife. And the person asks the question, you both have to hold up a card with yeah. the answer. If it's the same, you win a point. And they'd clearly pre-planned what their answers were going to be regardless of the question. So one was, um, like, where do you see yourself in three years? And they both held up the next Steve Blackman. And I was just like, yes, <laughs> this is amazing television. Oh, it was, yeah, it was garbage. I loved it. It was, it was, uh... <laughs> watchable at times. I think for me it's like Michael Cole but as a heel and when he was on Raw it's mad, that was a bit irritating but he could really switch off because I think Vince mm. just wasn't paying attention to the show so Michael Cole and like uh, Josh Matthews and sometimes CM yeah. Punk they just wouldn't give a fuck with what they said it's, it's on YouTube, just search up CM Punk M NXT commentary or Michael Cole commentary, oh, falling asleep on it and on his phone it's like ah, oh, they just rip into it but it's fucking really funny, it's quite rare to see them that kind of side Punk commentary was wonderful. Oh, mate, it was wicked. It was wicked. Um, Peter, going to wrap this interview up. If you can let the listeners know what have you got lined up for the rest of the year, anything you want to promote, anything you want to share, or any wrestlers you want to call out, the opportunity is yours, my man. Go for it. Oh, well, next is Stranger Things 4, which is the something of October. <laughs> End of October. 27th. 27th. And it's probably at Lee or Westcliff. Westcliff. Stronger Things. Three. Go. Stronger Things. Was <laughs> I close? There you go. I'm wrestling there. You're doing yeah. commentary. Yeah, I am. I am apparently. I'm all about promos, man. In Leon C. End of yeah. October, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Be good. Just come down and see me. Or more importantly, see George. You know, he's gonna be commentating. Go see Peter. He's he's good live, honestly. Him and Denzel Mack had a really good match live. Really, really good. It's on YouTube. It's uh, on the DKW Academy uh, YouTube channel. Just find it, watch that match. It's about 15, 20 minutes long, back and forth, back and forth. Really fucking good. To the point where I'm just kind of like in shock. I just didn't know, have a clue how it's gonna end, but Take my fan hat off now. It's not a wig. It's real hair. He is a very good wrestler for the amount of time he's been wrestling as Denzel. Yeah, he's good. He, he is very, very good. And he was very happy to do all the silly spots that I could think of. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. I'll just catch you. I was like, all right, then. <laughs> let's just do that then. <laughs> but yeah, he was um, happy to be led through the match by me, which... Probably only the second time I've ever led a match. Um, and I was very happy with how the structure came out. So mm. I really enjoyed that match. Um, it was just after AEW at Wembley. Yes, the and, day before AEW at All In. Yeah. And I was in my head being like, 
right, we're not Swerve, but let's do our best to be as close to Swerve uh, Brian Danielson as we can. Let's do our version of that. And uh, yeah, I really tried to make it very back and forth and very like hard hitting and yeah, true to the AEW style as best I could. It was a good match. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Fans and tenants loved it. Um, Peter, thank you for coming on. Much appreciated. Um, so glad we got some range. I'll have a chat with you in person in a few weeks. Uh, do you know where I'm going to be sp- uh, seeing Peter? Where you can see us, me on commentary, Peter on wrestling. Uh, it'll be in DKW's Strong Things 3 next weekend. No, it's not next weekend. Uh, you've confused me now. It's on the 27th of October, right before Halloween. Bring your kids, bring your partners, bring your friends. You're going to be treated to a great Halloween event show. Awesome cards. Find DKW Academy on social media. Facebook, you can find them there. But if you want to find Peter Miller on Facebook, not Facebook, Instagram, where do they find you, mate? Uh, it's Peter underscore Miller underscore PW for Pro Wrestler. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'll put your social media handles in the description below. I'll put my social media handles in the description below. Also, you can give us both a follow. You can subscribe to this channel and then also see what I've got lined up in the next few weeks as well on my social media. But for now, everyone, have a good week. I can't read it that well. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. (laughs) Take care, everyone.